This video is brought to you by Squarespace. Is it possible to get not just good video autofocus with the Fuji X-T4, but great video autofocus? We can't just have good, it needs to be great. It needs to be, well, not perfect, I don't expect it to be perfect, but we need it to do exactly what we want it to do and not do random things like pulsing or jumping onto the background. With video autofocus, you need it to be, well, reliable. You need to be able to trust it. And that's the key thing. Can you trust the video autofocus of the Fuji X-T4? Just to be clear, this is not a review of the X-T4 which is a terrific camera. It has absolutely amazing features. The image is beautiful both in stills and video. It has fantastic recording options both in frame rates and codecs. The stabilization is pretty good. It's got a flip out screen. This camera is such a terrific all rounder. In this video though, I am just going to be looking at the autofocus. Not the stills autofocus, just the video performance. In the past few years, I've embraced autofocus as it's gotten better and better and better. The first camera that I use that really had great video autofocus was the Canon 1DX Mark II. Truly superb with its dual pixel autofocus. In fact, it was a Canon 1DX Mark II, which was the first camera that I used on a professional job using video autofocus for interviews because I trusted it. Locked on to the face and it was just flawless. If you just wanna know whether it's as good as the Sony phase detection autofocus or the Canon dual pixel autofocus, no, it's not as good, but it is certainly getting there and I have seen improvements in body after body. This is the best video autofocus I've seen with a Fuji camera. I've got quite a few different lenses for the Fuji uh, I rented some as well for this video and I, I bought a couple more. So you're gonna see a good variety of lenses in both price and focal range and speed. If I do keep glancing down there, it's because I have the Atomos Shogun 7 recording, so I'm just checking to making sure everything is, is looking fine with that video autofocus. And I am recording in HD for the actual recording of the menus. You can't have the menus on a screen to record in 4K, which is a shame. You can get it clean, but you can't have it in 4K with the info on there. Sorry about that, but I am recording internally in 4K. I've got quite a contrasty look here and I've made sure that the background isn't brighter. If the background is brighter, you can have issues because there is contrast based on focus in there alongside the phase detection. And that can throw a lot of cameras. It's not as bad as just contrast based autofocus cameras, which will really just not focus on something in the foreground if the background is brighter, but it still can fail at times. Now we can see the eye right now, uh, but it's very easy to lose it. Sometimes it's on there and sometimes it's gone. It's you know partly down to the fact that my lighting is very side on, but my eyes are quite visible. And also, if I do put on my glasses, it tends to disappear as well. There we go. So it's a bit like a Superman Clark Kent disguise. It cannot see that it's me. Not that I'm saying I'm Superman or Clark Kent with my glasses on, but when I take my glasses off, it can see me again, which is a bit annoying really. In my last video about autofocus, which is about 50 minutes long, thankfully this video is not gonna be anywhere near that long, I showed you how important settings are for all of these cameras. See what we have there is, it's fast when it figures out there is something changing, but it takes ages to realize that there is something more important. That's not good. This could be the optimum settings for this situation right now. So I am doing the face tracking test, but also how well does it work when you are changing from one subject to another, you know, like this. Me, lollipop. Me, lollipop. Not too bad. 
quite fast, but not too bad. Yeah, you can go now. Thank you. So this is the 35 millimeter F2 VR. And it's a terrific lens. It's definitely one of the best. But look at it right now. It's not performing brilliantly. It is picking up my face, it's picking up my eye. But it doesn't seem to be, it's not the fact when I'm moving that much. It's just, it doesn't seem to be solid. See, that sort of thing, that pulsing. The uncertainty is what you don't want. Why is it doing that? I have the tracking sensitivity set to the default of two. Zero being the fastest and four being the slowest. And the speed is at zero. Minus five being the slowest, plus five being the fastest. I will be looking up constantly because that's where the Shogun screen is, just to see how well it's working. Um, I'm just gonna do realistic, so I'm not gonna do the crazy rocking forwards, just enough movement to just see how well it works. You can see that little pulsing there, it's just, picking up my hand, even though it's on face tracking, but my hand, interesting. Plus two and minus three. Oof, didn't like that. So I'm taking off face tracking right now to see if we get anything better. The answer is no. This is not what I expected to happen. I just need to quickly shift focus onto something else, which is a thank you to Squarespace for sponsoring this video and making it possible. I've had a website since going freelance in 2006. It then became a blog the following year, but it got so big that the part where people could find out how to actually hire me was lost. That's when it got redesigned and split up into two sections. The new work part of my site, the part where people can find out how to actually hire me, was created using Squarespace and one of their fantastic templates. Perfect for people who cannot code for toffee, like me. You can get 10% off your own website or domain via the link in the description. I spent roughly four hours doing these tests and it was one of the most frustrating four hours of my life. Some lenses of course did better than others but what was really frustrating was the same lens would sometimes work well and sometimes not work well and there was no real reason for it. I had really good results with the little WR lenses previously but for some reason during these tests I wasn't getting great results. One of the better primes was the 16mm 1.4. It will be less obvious if there's any pulsing on a wider lens, of course. For the most part, it seemed to behave itself as long as you kept that speed down in the lower half. I know it's a bit slow on the motor, but it's, it's better to be slow and more natural looking than too fast and unnatural. Fault sensitivity, default speed, show you the difference. It did feel like the sensitivity did need to be on the far side for pretty much all of the lenses. Otherwise it was doing that whole catch up jumping, which was no good at all. You can see here the settings are very similar to the previous shot, just a tiny bit, but look how different the results are. That's what drove me nuts. The lens that impressed me the most by far was the 16 to 55 f2.8. When I wanted it to be fast, it did a really nice job. And when I wanted it to be nice and subtle and smooth, it also did a really nice job. Smooth, solid. It was definitely the lens that behaved itself the most. It's pretty good. Seems to be the best so far. The 90mm f2 did pretty well, actually. I was quite surprised, mostly because the more expensive fast primes apart from that 16mm, really weren't doing very well. The 56mm 1.2 was awful. No matter what I tried, it was awful. 35 1.4, sometimes I could get some okay results, but okay, that was what I was getting. One of the lenses which did surprise me was the 18-55 to kit lens. That seemed to do okay under certain situations. It's pretty good, isn't it? I think my biggest takeaway from this specific test was 
definitely do keep that sensitivity on the far side and make sure that your speed isn't too fast. Because these lenses are not designed for video autofocus, they're designed for still, so you want to snap onto things quickly. Trying to tame them, which is what we need for video autofocus, is definitely an uphill struggle, especially for some of the older lenses. No, it's terrible. Having all of these lenses and really most of them not behaving as I want them to behave was pretty frustrating. The further away you are from some of these lenses definitely made things better as you'd expect because it doesn't have so many micro changes to do as you are moving. But after this test I was really just absolutely fed up. I'm done. So the Viltrox lenses weren't in that test because I did it and then I shared a couple of photos and on Instagram somebody said I should try the Viltrox lenses because apparently they work better than the native lenses. They do in certain things and they definitely don't in other things. They're not bad as you can see uh, sort of tracking my face it's, it's actually pretty good. What it's not good at doing is anything subtle. So maybe if I just move my hands slowly up, no, just see just jumps and then jumps back. Nasty pulsing in the way that it does it. So this is a 23mm WRF2 Fuji. To show the difference with smoothness compared to the Viltrox. And my hand, it's quite slow I find this lens. So having the speed of the motor set to minus five, I do find to be a little bit too slow. Yeah, you can see it takes forever to catch up. I do like these little WR lenses, but I have found that the motor is a little bit slower compared to the other lenses, and so I do have to push up my speed in that settings, keeping the sensitivity the same, but have that speed a little bit high. In fact, it's compared to say the 16mm 1.4, which I have at minus five for speed, this is at minus two and it performs much better. If you have it at minus five, it's painfully slow. Settings, settings, settings. These shots taken with the Viltrox 35mm 1.4 of the Sigma FP looked really good. Really lovely smooth adjustments on a very challenging shot when it comes to autofocus. It's that part of it which sells these lenses to me. It's this other bit that doesn't. And this is on the slowest speed. When it works well, it's actually really good. So I probably will hang on to these lenses just because I think they have really good potential and they're really cheap. If you are doing an interview, filming yourself, it does seem pretty much that you want that sensitivity to be as high as possible because you're not really gonna have many things distracting. It's when there's things going you know, across the frame. That is when you basically don't want it to be too sensitive. We want it to be sensitive, but we want our motor to be slow. We don't want it to be sensitive at a fast speed because you see you get all of that nasty jumping. But by having it slow, it means it's constantly reacting and never playing catch up. It's the catch up which makes things look really ugly. Apart from lenses like the little WRs, which are very similar, the settings can vary so drastically for each of them and so drastically depending on what you want it to do. I really recommend making notes for the ideal settings for each of your lenses that you find performs the best for those different types of filming. Because the last thing you want to do on a shoot is to, you know, just keep experimenting until you get it exactly right. Because you're most likely not going to have time. You want to know which is the best setting for filming interviews straight off. Eventually you'll remember it, unless of course you have hundreds of lenses. But yeah, something I strongly recommend. I have found that you do need to record internally to get the best performance of video autofocus. If you just leave it on standby and record externally, it isn't anywhere near as smooth as what you want, so you do have to record internally. So this is one of my favorites from the test, the 16mm 1.4 Fuji, with the sensitivity at the maximum and the speed at the slowest. And it, I just find that it's actually really lovely and smooth. You can see that it's, it's nice for the actual transitioning yeah, so let me hold up a lens. So with the default settings now on that same lens, what's it like? You see what I mean about the sensitivity, the way that it plays catch up? 
Now it's much better if you have that sensitivity to fast. The way that Fuji displays the settings for tracking sensitivity and autofocus speed is really confusing. With autofocus speed, it makes sense as the higher the number, the faster it is. But with tracking sensitivity, it's the other way around. The lower number is the quickest and the higher number, the slowest. Why? The 16 55 f2.8 Fuji is very good. And I thought it might be to do with the linear drive as opposed to the stepping motor but I've got some great performance with stepping motor lenses as well, and not so great performance with other lenses with linear motors. So there's not that. I think the age of the lens definitely makes a difference. This is one of my favorite lenses, but the autofocus is not good. I actually have the speed set to zero for a reason, but you can see, look, the way that it's pulsing, it's, you need to push it up because the motor is really slow. But when you do that, you end up with this. So. Let me bring it down to a more reasonable level and you can see the issues that I have. So this is the speed now set to minus two from zero, brought it down to, and it makes a big difference in the actual speed. If, if I move at all, it, it cannot even remotely keep up with me. So this is not a good video autofocus lens and this sums up the issues we have. The really lovely, fast, older lenses from Fuji are not designed for continuous video autofocus. It's simple as that. The newer ones, they are taking it into account and we are gonna see better and better performance with the newer lenses. So going right back to what I said at the beginning about is the video autofocus of the Fuji something you can trust? Is it reliable enough? For straight talking heads with even lighting, nothing too bright behind, I think it could do well and I would use it but if I didn't have my other cameras I would use it for some of the lenses but not most of them and I think that's really what it comes down to the lenses are the thing which is holding it back I feel the technology inside the camera is actually pretty good now we just need the lenses to catch up I don't know how long it will take but hopefully not too long because when it does work it's really nice and I love the X-T4, I think it's a fantastic camera. So many great features, great image, great stills. I wouldn't say it's the best camera I've ever made, but it's close. That for me is my GFX 100. But this is a very close second. Yeah. And the nice lights gone. Oh, I 